थैंक यू वेरी मच सर एक्सक्यूज सर जस्ट वन मिनट आई वॉन्ट टू इंट्रोड्यूस फर्स्ट ओके ओके सो थैंक यू सर रिस्पेक्टेड कैंडिडेट्स एंड डॉक्टर महेश चंद्र सर टूडे वी हैव ए स्टॉल वर्ट इन दील्ड ऑफ ऑर्गेनिक फार्मिंग ही इज वेरी वेल नोन पर्सन इन अवर कंट्री फॉर पर्टिकुलरली फॉर ऑर्गेनिक फार्मिंग ऑफ लाइव स्टॉक सर इज वेरी रिनाउंड साइंटिस्ट फ्रॉम इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ वेटनरी साइंस इज बरेली एंड सिंस लास्ट आई थिंक टू डिकेट्स ही इज लुकिंग आफ्टर ऑर्गेनिक फार्मिंग डेवलपमेंट एंड प्रमोशन ऑफ ऑर्गेनिक फार्मिंग टेक्निक्स फॉर लाइव स्टॉक प्रोडक्शन इन अवर इनिशियल लेक्चर्स Uh, we have introduced that without live stock component we cannot think about crop component in case of organic farming because uh, both uh, uh, these components are uh, very much uh, uh, complementary to each other so sir uh, uh, we are uh, uh, organizing this training uh, in a collaboration with uh, manage national institute of agricultural extension management about uh, 70 participants are there so this uh, uh, certified farm advisor in organic farming is being organized in two phases in first phase uh, uh, that totally uh, online uh, uh, medium uh, it is organized by manage only uh, the candidates who clear that first phase they enter into the second phase and this is one is the second phase Uh, though earlier we have organized that 15 days uh, second phase uh, at our institute totally a practical uh, oriented program but this year due to corona virus uh, the wave uh, this was split into two phases first 9 uh, days virtual and then 6 days uh, uh, physical uh, practical course will be taken later on so this is virtual phase of uh, that uh, uh, phase second of certified farm advisor and after uh, uh, completion of the second phase they enter into the third, third phase uh, all uh, participants who clear the second phase uh, they uh, uh, went to their respective places uh, as per their wish they uh, conduct practical san organic farming and after completion of their reports only they are uh, given the certificate of certified farm advisor in organic farming so in this way we are organizing this training sir uh, most of our candidates uh, they are uh, some of them are uh, assistant director agriculture many of them are technical uh, person uh, working in state departments of uh, agriculture from different state of the country almost they are from uh, uh, 15 to 16 states of the country and uh, uh, some of them are entrepreneur in the field of organic farming so uh, with this uh, i welcome you all uh, uh, on behalf of our organizing committee and on behalf of indian institute of farming system research modipuram mirat i welcome dr mahesh chandra sir uh, sir now now i hand over uh, the uh, uh, program for your presentation welcome sir thank you thank you thank you to ifs sir and dr chandramanu for introduction so i am very happy to be here today so j- before we start uh, this program let us do a small kind of a, a preliminary exercise so you must be having with you notebook and pen do you have with you generally some of you might be attending with mobile phone it may not be just in case you are having a paper sheet and pen you draw one square in this paper sheet so this is you know all participant please yes no actually will it it should be participatory so just it's not a monologue that i am talking to you we'll make it interactive experience so we'll interact and and i also recall that once i went to all the way from bareilly to hyderabad and this lecture was recorded at Ma- norm hyderabad on the request of manage and and i was paid and everything now because of the corona now we are getting used to online otherwise i went to norm once some 5 5 years back to record a lecture for the same program certified farm advisor on organic farming and then it was the, that more now it changed so if you have drawn that square you divide in four four parts if you have divided so if you can make it full screen and all video on let me see what you have done
So it is yours is. So the others can also show that if you have. Don't shy away from showing that if you, others all. If, if you can make it full screen for all the people can be seen. How it can be view mode. Yeah, so I, I want to see all of you. So, so if a little more, some of more of you, because this is the way that I can see also that how you are attending. So, uh, so have you dis divided it in four equal parts? Please, somebody say that if you have divided in four equal parts. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. okay, okay. It's a very nice. Uh, let me take a selfie with you all, people. It's a because it's it's looking a very good audience. So you see that where from you got this idea of dividing into four equal parts. I didn't say this thing. I asked you to draw a square and divide in four parts. Where from you got this idea that you will divide in four equal parts? If I ask this question to a kid, baby, and because he's not so conditioned in ideas, he will not divide in four equal parts. He'll, he'll try to think very creatively. But what happens as we grow up, we stop being creative. We become very conditioned. You know, you take breakfast in the morning, then we take lunch, then we take dinner, then we sleep. Again, we repeat the same thing. This is what is happening in many a time in agricultural practices. You know, we are growing crop, rice, wheat, sugar cane over the years, over the years, over the year. We don't try to deviate here and there and our we try. We don't try to business business like. So this is what happens. Many a time, then we are not creative. Organic farming can be seen as a creative manifestation of agriculture a bit. And all cannot be creative at a time. No, In a society, as you have drawn, one or two might have done in a different way like that, a crossing like that. Four. That is also a way of doing four parts, not exactly four square parts. So in a society, if you conduct this survey, we find often up to 98% of the people, they do like that only. So don't worry that if you have divided in four equal part, not bad. If I had been asked this question long back, I would have done the same thing. So we are all conditioned people. So, yeah. so in the conditioned system, let me share my own experience. I started this organic agriculture growing crop in 1995. Can you imagine? Government of yeah. India program on organic agriculture came in 2001. Yeah. So when I was posted in Muktasar campus of IVRI, I started growing organic vegetables in collaboration with one of my UG classmates, BSC agriculture classmate, who was running one NGO, and we clubbed with one farmer who was a retired IVR employee. So I started growing organic vegetables. That was the beginning in 1995. And we grew vegetables, we harvested vegetables organically, we sold to the campus resident and collected, did a survey how, how they feel about this production process. So that was the big 1995, now 26 years back. So this is what is the beginning. So now uh, coming to the lecture part, so I should, uh, uh, I should share my screen and then this visible to you. Yes, yes sir. sir, big bill. Please keep yes, it in yes, presentation yes. mode then. So now it is presentation mode. So I believe that you might be already aware about this global statistics. This is the latest statistics. So what is happening about the 3.4 million organic farmers around the world, global organic food market is 121 billion euros now. And then the number of the top three countries, India, Ethiopia, in terms of number of farmers, India is number one still, because our uh, this almost going to be 16 lakh, 1.6 million farmers are in India. And our Ministry of Agriculture figures are now they are touching 3 million. Actually, this is the old data they collect, feeble people, they collect data of 2019 beginning. So when they are reporting in uh, 21, that is to, 
and only 422. So likewise, land million and where it is, this is the then next figure is that again, 3.4 million producers, 1.8 million in Asia, growth is since 7.6. All the statics I can share this presentation. You can have later on to a view of this. This again, you can see 74.9 million hectares. Australia is on top in terms of hectares and farmland. Excuse me, sir. Okay, you not, not moving now? Uh -huh, uh, not moving. Not and in even it is not in presentation mode. Thoda sa you no, it can was, it was in presentation mode, sir. but, but uh, uh -huh, now uh, sometimes it, problem comes. Sir. Now it is moving. Uh, moving but uh, presentation mode uh, me dikhai nahi de raha sir ek bar unshare karke fir se share kar lijiye to better rahega hmm. just stop share dikh raha na share presentation mode karne se khis sakti nahi kabhi kabhi ab sirf thoda gaya uh, sir, uh, uh, again, वही आ रहा है uh, normal mode में presentation mode में नहीं आ रहा. Uh, sir, unshare करके ना जो presentation mode और full screen दिख रहा है वही click करेंगे तो आ जाएगा exactly. इसको कर जब नॉन प्रेजेंटेशन मोड में करें तो वो दिखेगा जाए डॉक्टर साहब इट्स ओके विजिबल नो प्रॉब्लम ये शिफ्ट हो रहा है प्रेजेंटेशन मोड विजिबल है शिफ्ट हो रहा है नहीं नहीं नो प्रॉब्लम विजिबल नहीं शिफ्ट हो रहा है ना ये स्लाइड हां मूव तो कर रहा है सर नाउ मूव करने की बात है उसकी कोई बात नहीं प्रेजेंटेशन मोड नहीं भी है मोड में नहीं आ रहा सर ये अभी इंडिया सक्सेस स्टोरी वाला साइट दिख रहा है Ah, yes, sir. Yes. Already, already, because this course is coming to the close, you might have already been told about these statistics. So, what I want to say that this uh, organic food as product export has doubled in last one year. In 2021, that it has reached to 1,040 million uh, dollars, and it, we are exporting to 58 countries, and the 16 lakh farmers, registered organic farmers. So then there is willingness to pay. Startup and farmers are eager to venture into organic production. Policy support is there. So, but India exported now the significant thing now because I'm talking about the uh, livestock. Significant aspect is that last year, before last year, we could export 2,125 kg of certified clarified butter to UAE. Otherwise, if you look at our product profile, what we are exporting, that is mostly crop products. Livestock product only we have now made at beginning by exporting to Dubai, UAE. That is only small quantity, 2,125 kg. There are multiple contentions to, to be resolved in animal husbandry because in case of animal husbandry, it is a big difficult in a sense that there is a little export demand as of today. And also two systems are involved. One is crop and livestock. So it becomes a little bit complicated and cumbersome. There are many common problems uh, many countries are facing in organic animal husbandry. In case of India, livestock scenario. Now this slide is shifting now, is it? Somebody should say. No, sir. No, sir. Oh, this is the problem. This calling somebody. Officer, sir, number slide. India live stock say. Indian livestock scenario is right now, Yes, sir. So, so there is what the problem is high in number, low in productivity. So we are having a huge livestock population, which are low productive, poor genetic potential, poorly fed livestock or feed, feed fodder situation is very weak. And you know, we cultivate fodder only in less than five hectare, uh, five percent of the area. Poorly fed livestock, impro improper housing. Weak disease prevention and control infrastructure. Just because we do have disease like foot and mouth disease in India, 
we are restricted to export to many livestock products to many countries. So that is a big hindrance coming on the way of exporting livestock product, including organic livestock product. Poorly developed livestock value chains, live, we are not processing products, lack of processing value addition and market infrastructure, but the strength is what? We should focus on our strength. Our strength is Indian breeds are hardy, can thrive on resource state domains, crop residue based. Native Indian breeds have potential to do well under organic systems. That is why there is much emphasis on indigenous cattle. Now the next slide is seen now. Organic markets in developed countries, is it there? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, okay, it means it is shifting. So now you see how, how we are getting inspiration to go for organic animal production, because this kind of a market which is coming up in the Western countries, if you look at, look at this is the pictures taken in Korea, in German market, in Iran and different countries, and there where the organic certified organic livestock products are served in the market. When people are visiting abroad and they are looking to the potential that they can do in India also, this is being uh, thought of. You see how they have labeled it, original Ayurveda bio ghee that I saw in a Hamburg market. And then when I asked where from this product has come to you, that the shopkeeper told that uh, it is coming from Dubai. At that time, there was not no possibility of sending it directly from India to German market. There was some restrictions there. So people often do send it to the Dubai and from Dubai uh, products are shipped to many countries. So this kind of a scenario you will see soon in coming years, wherein the shopping malls will have organic certified livestock products sell in their products. So you see the kind of, so what is organic animal husbandry? So you might have been told the definition of organic agriculture, the system of livestock production that promotes the use of organic and biodegradable inputs from the ecosystem, deliberately avoiding the use of synthetic inputs. That is true in case of crops also. And synthetic inputs such as drugs, feed additives, and genetically engineered breeding inputs while ensuring the welfare of animals. So you, you look into the keywords. Synthetic inputs are avoided, and then and animal welfare is very important. Feed additives are not allowed. So it follows the principles and practices of organic farming. You might have been told about what are the principles and practices of organic farming. A farmer who would like to convert from conventional milk poultry production to organic milk poultry product on milk or poultry production should be familiar with the organic livestock farming standards. So I believe that you are already familiar with the organic standards, farming standards. That may be from crop and as NPOP standard, National Program on Organic Production, that is a book by NA, uh, this thing, Apida, and then you can download it. That contains animal husbandry standards as well. So about the living condition that it should be comfortable and then uh, as per the natural behavior of the animal, they should, uh, uh, they, they should be, there should be bigger space for that their stay. Suppose if one square meter is required for conventional uh, livestock production, it has to be one and a half times more because for the movement of animals, it should not feel restricted and it should have free mobility. <coughs> Access to outdoor, they should have freedom to go outside, maybe grazing area also, fresh air, direct sunlight, suitable to the species and access to pasture for remnants. So grazing opportunities should be there and the fresh water should be available. Overcrowding should not be done in order to avoid conflict behavior. These are some of the standards. <laughs> Farmer must ensure that animal may not have access to open air access area or run during the heavy rain period. So even if you are keeping animals outside that during the heavy rain period or adverse condition, climatic condition, there should be some indoor facility. <laughs> Cattle set should be proper as per the requirement. So comfortable, it should be com uh, comfortable. So I, I will, after this presentation, I will brief you about the key issues. So just I'm moving quickly. You see that kind of a kind of a system, it is totally animal welfare oriented. If you look at, and here also, though the mix of species are not allowed under the organic systems, here they have kept some poultry birds. What these poultry birds do usually, you know, they pick lice, and the ticks from the body of animals. So that you don't have to use kind of a, actually parasite or this parasiticide, which kills this one. So you don't use chemicals to kill these ticks or lysis and the, the animals are enjoying freedom. They are not tied, tethering is not allowed. Uh, you cannot tie animal with the, with the rope or the tethering is, tethering is not allowed. So this is, so comfortable housing is very important for them. This is some of the organic livestock production system, which I saw in Germany. So this is organic demonstration units in South Korea. If you look at how innovatively, how beautifully they have done housing for animals. 
in Korea. So they have kept a bigger space for a single cow here. If you look at, so the, the poultry birds are kept. And if the poultry birds, birds want to come out and wash pasture, they can, even they have designs to transport poultry birds to some grazing pasture in areas. And they bring back to the set, this thing. And then you see the pigs, how they have kept. So housing design is very important part under the organic systems also. Housing should be comfortable. It should be welfare oriented. It should not be cramped and we should not keep mix of species in the same and almost similar age animals should be kept together of same species. So these are some of the pictures. So you see the animal welfare, you can see again the loose housing system. So inter winters, already Indian farmers are a lot animal welfare oriented in this way if you look at. So suppose they want to stretch their back, it has been provided. It's these are the, some of the pictures about the free range system is encouraged. And also, this is a very old picture I have taken in Copenhagen in 1996. So that was the first time I attended international conference and the pigry pigs they were keeping, they used, they would dig a pond also here so that pig can perform their rooting behavior of poking their nose into water. So this is what is arrangement has been made and they are feeding. So this slides are moving now, you were able to see this pigs. Yes, yes, okay, good. So this is again, waste management is also very important part that we should not contaminate soil by the, by the urine and all uh, material leaching into nitrate leaching. Labeling of organic product is also important. Let me finish first it very quickly that all the 95% organic ingredients should be, there should be 5% are sometimes allowed ingredients in some products. And you know the organic certification is a process certification. It is not a product certification. Final product is only, is, final product is not the form matter, but it is entire process is uh, important in the organic system. So this is government of India, India organic logo. Now they have introduced Javik Bharat logo also by the Food Safety Standard Authority of India. So if you see any organic product, normally we see logo of the certification agency, logo of India, Javik Bharat logo. So that and a lot of descriptions and all the, so that you can establish the value chain. Entire trace, you can trace the chain, how it has, the product has moved from original place. Labeling is so important in organic production systems. So livestock identification and record keeping is very important. Whenever you are going for organic production, especially of livestock also, you have to maintain all the records in writing because audit party will come and will see that what record you have maintained right from the birth of animal and where from you procured. So you have to take the record and you have to tag and you are tagging, you have to done and that identification number, each animal should be at that identity, identification. So record because Audit party, whenever they audit, because two audits happens, you know, once the certification agency will see, and also the government side, APIDA also send a team to audit your production facility sometime. So if they, they, they will say how much compliant you are to the organic process. If they say that you are not compliant, so you will not be certified as an organic. So record maintenance is a very important aspect under organic production. So what record is generally parent, parent detail, where from you uh, brought the animal, source and purchase details, animal details, breeding detail, feeding detail, healthcare including details of vaccination, medication, veterinarian, prescription and withdrawal period, production details, sale details, any other relevant detail, all detail you have to maintain in the register, record keeping. I'm again telling record keeping under organic farming system is very important. So these labeling of organic poultry products, you have to label them, feed stuff, only you have to have an organic feed. Crops should be grown organic, organically. In case you don't have your own organic feed and fodder, you can have arrangement with somebody, be neighbor or in the same area, you can buy from it. But you have to have initially, in the initial year, if you are not having sufficient organic feed and fodder with you, there is a provision that up to 80%, up to 20% you can from outside, you can take it. Slowly, slowly your farm management plan, so to speak that in long term, within so many years, you will be 100% self-sufficient and you will have all feed and product available online. So healthcare, generally healthcare has to be, we have to minimize allopathic use. Allopathic medicines, generally we have to depend on our uh, homemade uh, remedies, which should be proven. 
or you can get Ayurveda treatment and all, but every treatment method should be validated. It should be well-tested, proven, proven method you have to use. At the last resort, you can go for the allopathic medicine. A general question arises that, can we vaccinate our animals? Yes, you can vaccinate your animals, provided that disease, that the vaccinating is a legal requirement in the country. Say, for example, in India, right now, vaccinating against FMD disease is a legal requirement. A farmer, organic farmer cannot say that I will not vaccinate my animal because I am an organic farmer. He has to vaccinate for FMD disease because it is a legal requirement in India to get vaccinated animals against FMD. So farmer cannot avoid vaccinating animals. Just like you may be having concern that you want to maybe interested to know whether we can give antibiotics to animals or not. Yes, you can give antibiotics to animals. But there is a condition because whenever you see standards, organic standard, you read the first sentence, they say, this is not allowed. But again, make it a point to read the next sentence, what it says. It is allowed under certain conditions. What are the conditions? For example, there is a disease, mastitis in animal, cow. Dairy cow is suffering from mastitis disease. For that, there is only a remedy, which is very effective is antibiotic treatment. You can give antibiotic treatment to that cow on the recommendation of a veterinarian. That antibiotic treatment can be given. And that treatment given, and if that antibiotic treatment can be given twice in a year, it is allowed. On the recommendation of the veterinarian that there is no other remedy available, we have to give antibiotic treatment, but it can easily restricted up to twice only. In case the animal is not yet treated, and still they need antibiotic treatment further, then you have to withdraw that particular animal from the organic system, organic production system. So if it is withdrawn, and also when you are giving antibiotic treatment or any other allopathic treatment, you have to follow the withdrawal period. Suppose a particular antibiotic treatment requires a five days withdrawal period. So we can withdraw milk from the organic system. You can not sell that milk as an organic milk for those five days. After five days, once the withdrawal period is over, then you can sell that milk as an organic milk. So this is about the antibiotics. This is about the vaccination. Both are allowed on the recommendation of the vet qualified veterinarian and that there is certain withdrawal period is there. So this is the health requirement. So uh, antibiotics cannot be used as a routine practice, as a prophylactic measure. You cannot give, and also you cannot uh, vaccinate animal for all the disease randomly. If that disease is endemic in particular area, it is occurring time and again in that particular area, that then on the recommendation of the veterinarian, you can go. Also, when animal is sick and it is injured and you need to give painkiller. So animals should not be allowed to suffer with pain for the want of the treatment. If there is a painkiller, then, but only thing is that you have to maintain record under such and such condition, I have given painkiller to the animal and for this many days, and the doctor's name who recommended painkiller pain to that animal. So this is. <clears throat> these are some, some of the pictures. This is a dairy, organic dairy in Italy. I visited 2018. So this particular uh, this particular farmer. You can, you can have a look on this video about this particular dairy, Hombre. This I have given you the link. You simply give in Google H-O-M-B-R-E, Hombre Dairy. You will get, they, this farmer was having 250 cattle, cows, holistic fusion cows. And all he was having milk products and he was having his own shop to sell this organic milk products. And this is cheese. This is, two, and two-year-old cheese, seasoned cheese kept in air cool condition for export to the other European countries. I brought half a kg of cheese for uh, one of our local organic farmer who is not having cows, animals at his farm. He's having a 40 acre organic farm, but he doesn't maintain any livestock. I just want to motivate. I just seven many times he's a uh, good friend of mine. I just encourage him to keep some livestock and have some organic milk production also. But so far in last three years, he is not yet motivated enough to do that thing. So I am very much impressed with this particular farmer, young agriculture graduate, around the age of 40 years. So he has, he's exporting to many countries in the US and Europe, certified organic mint from our area, from my district. So now he has attended a training in Brazil for 15 days on leadership. And also he has visited biggest organic fair in the world, Nuremberg Fair in Germany. 
So his visit was sponsored by the importers who are, who are importing certified mint oil from him. Now, also good thing is that we are talking a lot about farmer produce organization. This particular farmer has uh, with him 250, 2,500 farmers with him, whom he gave technical advice, know-how on organic production of mint and other crops, and he procures mint crop from them and extract oil, process it, put in containers and ship to US and Europe. You see, just 40 years of age and agriculture graduate and doing this thing. I wrote in 2016 a blog on him. You give simply the title on the Google, Minting Organic Money. If you read Minting Organic Money, in, that was written and published in 2016. And now in five years, he has developed so much. You know, last year he exported 50 crore worth of certified mint oil, 50 crore. And he donated 5 lakh rupees to Prime Minister Relief, Relief Fund because he's having a political ambition and he wanted to contest this year MLA election. So because he's, as he's growing up and earning money, and if you, is, if you visit his facility, it is just like a five-star hotel in a rural area. Having all state-of-the-art implements he has procured from imported from the Europe. Are you able to see this one, Nihal, not only produce this slide? Somebody should yes, say. Sir. Yes, yes, sir. sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we now he's yeah. expanding into chamomile also. This is a you know chamomile tea for tea. He's helping farmers to grow this crop also, so that he can take essential oil from it also. He's seen. I take this like a, I also had a. This is this was again a managed sponsored training which I took. Uh, I did at here in IVRA. That was face to face training, not online, offline training. And I took to I took all of them to this farmer for a day for a, for one day so that they can see and interact with him. So now farmers are branding their farm names and bots an organic farm. This is the same farmer for whom I brought a half kg of cheese from Italy. So he doesn't have any, any animal at his farm other than the dogs. So it, this farm has been satisfied by Uttaranchal State Organic Certification Agency and also by USD Organic. And his brand name is farm as a God, an organic farm. And he sell all his product online, no Monday system and with the logo of India Organic here. So it is interior inside of his home, all packaged as for the requirements. And he's selling online, he gets online orders, he, ship, he sends the parcel. Again, this is a, if anyone you from Andhra Pradesh, this is Upala Prasad Rao in Krishna district, uh, Andhra Pradesh and the Ghansala is a place there. He, he does farming. And he has brand name his product as UPR because his name is Upala Prasad Rao. UPR brand of his product. He sell direct home. Uh, he does home delivery of his farm products. And also he's have, having a shop in Hyderabad and Bijawada. So this, these kind of organic farmers, they are very innovative, creative farmers. Those who want to maximize their product. This is the farmer, again, the same farmer in Braley, organic farmer growing organic crops. And this, this gentleman and that one came from all the way from Switzerland. He wanted him to grow potatoes to be imported in Switzerland. Somehow this deal didn't click, but this one, he was roaming around, he saw it and he discussed with the farmer has also become a smart that he did not agree with terms and condition because he wanted to have bigger share of this. But he thought I'm being a practicing farmer, I should have bigger share, but this, this, word, this deal did not click. So, you know, this kind of crops like this ragi, uh, of course, of score and very uh, millet and not many people who uh, were used to be interested to eat this one. But now because of the organic farming, because earlier we used to make chapatis only, roti out of this wheat flour. In my childhood days, I have eaten a lot of the chapatis of the ragi. In our area, we call uh, in Uttarakhand Madhwa, but it is known as ragi in Jharkhand, in Karnataka, in Andhra Pradesh, we grow. So, you see the market is what they have done. They have made variety product out of it. This is creating demand for this crop, ragi crop. Not because of the chapati people want to eat, because of the multiple products which have been made. And most of the, this, these things happen because of the organic person. So they, they, they are selling it as an organic product, nicely labeled with, with all kind of information, health foods. They're promoting it as health food. Again. So that I, I think the, you have seen these standards that NPOP document. Somebody should say that if you have seen it, I believe most of all of you must have seen by now. Somebody should say that, have you seen it? 
Yes. So during document. our initial lecture, we have uh, uh, already uh, stated about uh, organic standards. Okay. CMP, you you, standards. you have stated yeah. about. So I am suggesting to all of you that you can download it from Apida website if you have not done it so far. You go to an national program on organic production in Apida website, apida.government.in. Then you will find this document. You download it. All everything, uh, all the standards, including lifestyle standards, are mentioned in this document. So this is the book if you are interested particularly in livestock. So I have written Organic Livestock Farming published by Indian Council of Agriculture Research in 2013. And in 2017, it was reprinted. Now it is again in a demand that people are they're thinking of again having a uh, publishing it. And this and the document Organic Animal Husbandry Development in Sikkim, the roadmap, when the Sikkim was totally converted to as a declared as an organic state, the animal husbandry department was looking for information and how to go about. They were a bit worried. They invited me there for a workshop. And for the all veterinarian, I addressed them about the organic standard, how to go about. Then later on, they sent uh, a team of 15 field veterinarians to IBRI for five day training. I trained them on organic animal husbandry. So this is the ICR short course I did in 2006 for the faculty and scientists of ICR and State Agriculture Universities. Likewise, I have organized three ICR uh, short courses and by several courses for the field veterinarians for, by the Directorate of Extension Government of India, these training programs, because we have to build the capacity of the different stakeholders. So these are the organic animal husbandry field veterinarian from Sikkim State who came all the way to Braley in our institute IVRI and they were trained for five days. This is capacity building on organic certification because capacity building is required at the different levels. So not on not only not only at the level of farmers but also certifiers, also the field extension functionaries they need training. This is the inspectors of the Rajasthan Organic Certification Agency. So Roka Roka inspectors, organic inspectors, they visited IVRA and I trained them for five days here at IVRA. Again, I visited, I went to Bangalore and Aditi Certification Agency based in Bangalore, they certify because these two agencies are eligible to certify livestock operations also. There are 31 certification agencies to certify organic farms. So, but out of these only eight are having capacity to certify livestock operations because then they, when they apply to NAB, where I'm one of the members. So NAB, they submit their applications and then they make a claim that they have already been trained on organic inspections also, livestock inspections. So then these Aditi certification in Bangalore, Rajasthan organic certification in Rajasthan, along with other six, seven agencies, they are eligible to certify livestock operations. So some farmers now they want to willing to go organic My, because you are the field functionaries. Sometimes the farmers will approach you. I want to switch over to organic uh, uh, dairy farming, how to do it then you should be able to say how, how you do. So for that, you have to, you are attending this training program. And because this program is not so specific to animal husbandry only, it is in general. If you want to have some more information about that, you have to look for the literature. So then you can, you, you, you can, you can uh, uh, make yourself more aware about the, familiar about the organic livestock farming. So now that farmer, which I was talking about the mint grow, mint farmer and who is exporting mint oil, so now he want to help farmers to raise some livestock organic dairy also because their farms are already certified as organic farm. If they are maintaining some livestock, they can easily be certified as organic livestock production. That's why he get in touch with me. And then they, you see the names here, you see GIZ, All-in-One, Soil and More, Delphi. These are very, very big company based abroad in Europe and America. They are helping this particular farmer under uh, corporate social responsibility scheme so that they can, they, he can help the farmers. He's establishing uh, water pumps and he is giving so many facilities to farmers and taking care of education of their children and so many likewise. So now not only people sometimes think in terms of milk only as a commodity from livestock. This is startup from Pukud Veterinary College. They came and they presented their startup idea. Then how nicely they have given the product name Gober Gold. So we, we like their idea. We wanted to support them we, under RKBI Raftar scheme. Now they, we wanted to give them five lakh rupees and two months training at our institute, but somehow their this veterinary college did not allow them to come for two months. So they couldn't avail this scheme. 
So these consumers are asking for certified organic products. When there is demand, there has to be supply. And if this to ensure supply, somebody has to produce that one. In order to produce that, we field functionaries like you and me are supposed to help the farmers how to do it. This is why this training is all about. So now this is the product now, organic cow ghee. Produced by one dairy cooperative in West Bengal, Sundarban area. Sundarini Dairy Cooperatives is all women dairy cooperative society. Women dairy cooperative society. They are uh, certified by Rajasthan Organic Certification Agency for organic milk production and organic production. It is a certified dairy. Probably it is the first dairy in India, dairy cooperative, which is producing this milk. So one of my friends who is working with the NDDB, he gifted me this pack and I liked it. Immediately you saw how nicely it has been, all the information has been given in the name of a certifier and all Indian logo and all this kind of, they, they do also honeybee and other products they are also doing, this dairy cooperative. So this is some of the data about the organic uh, production. This is the domestic marketing, 16,050 tons of the milk, ghee clarified 400. And then India exported 2,125 kg of certified organic ghee, butter to UAE in 1920. And India is having currently 52 certified organic dairy operators, 66 meat operators, and three certified organic egg operators in India. They are the certified units, which are. So in comparison to crop, there are very less number. But if you can see that, but this is the beginning now. So we, in years to come, it will go up further. So now some of the farmers who are doing organic, this unfortunately, this farmer is no more now. Recently, I came to know, I visited his dairy outskirts of Hyderabad and he had brand name his dairy also, Sargo, Saro Organic Farm Fresh Milk. He was having a dedicated customer base to buy milk from him and he was keeping the indigenous cows, the small cows. And one girl, this girl, she did master thesis, MBA thesis on based on this particular dairy experience from the Naram Hyderabad. And he was supported in uh, venture by every business incubator of ICR Naram in Hyderabad. So, so that was now, you know, because our extension services are not yet fully aware about the organic standards many a time, there is lack of uh, awareness and expertise in this area. So, but these, organ these kind of enthusiastic farmers who want to venture into organic dairying, they are in getting touch with the incubators or other mechanisms or the certifiers also sometimes they are having their family members and also they are giving some support when, uh, to help these kind of farmers. Our traditional extension services are not yet equipped to cater to the needs of these kind of emerging farmers. So branded certified organic dairy products are now available in market. If you are from Bangalore area, you can see Aksai Kalpa and all this. So you can see they are coming up with the products. So cow dung is growing business. Uh, you can associate dairy, not only limiting only to milk, that you can have another associated business so that the net income can be increased of the farmers. Extension advisory service personnel need expertise in this area. So we so that our farmers can compete with. This is another uh, biotourism. Organic farms can be promoted also for biotourism also. So the, then the one important issues, important issue related with these are the replacing antibiotics by her herbal alternatives. You know, the dairy cooperatives currently in India, those which are supported by NDDB, they are promoting herbal uh, products for the treatment of animals in a very big way. In the Tanuvas, together with Translational University in Bangalore, what I think this university name, and then uh, they are collaborating and they are having a diploma course on the Ayurvedic uh, veterinary Ayurveda, something like that. And they are the, the products developed by that through the dairy cooperatives in a big way. And government of India is also supporting that kind of thing, that kind of a herbal product promotion for the treatment of animals. That is very important since Ayurvedic allopathic uh, drugs and medicines are highly restricted and can be used only under emergency uh, emergency situation. So there is a very good potential for herbal, herbal alternatives. We have to get validated this one. And indigenous breeds are doing well. We have to identify by selection of gradation. We have to improve their genetic potential we have, so that their productivity enhance. Fodder scarcity is there. So we have to pay attention to the fodder growing uh, so that, uh, that the, the, the milk productivity can be enhanced by feeding well. 
prevalence of food and mouth disease, vaccination and control environment is needed, needed. We have to eliminate and control this disease significantly. Till the time we are having this disease, we'll find it a lot difficult to export organic livestock product to many countries, especially in Europe, America, America, because they are free from FMT disease, they will not allow Indian products. This is a big hindrance in promoting organic livestock export from India. This is why there is not big push to organic animal husbandry so far in this country. And also internationally, there is not much emphasis on organic animal husbandry in comparison to the crops. So just to emphasize animal husbandry, we organize a conference, first international conference in animals in organic production in 2006 in Minnesota, USA, followed up with 2012 in Hamburg, and that also did in India in 2017. So we want to uh, pay more attention to the animal husbandry because animals should be the central uh, figure in organic farming. So we have to do research on all this is, these are some of the uh, recommendations. You see these kind of, some kind of a practices, which people are saying for the disease like mastitis, some plants they are applying on that. This kind of a herbal research is going on. Future, if they are able to develop some product, it will be useful for organic milk production and dairy and livestock production also. So formally, this my presentation is over. I would like you to discuss more so that because presentation often are not sufficient and then, so keywords, I want to start from the very beginning. You may be interested in some of your questions, likely question which you may have in your mind. I can speak from myself first. Later on, you can ask questions. First thing is that breeding. So people have a connotation that only indigenous cattle can be kept in organic farming. Exotic animals are not allowed. That is not true. You can keep exotic animals. You can keep hybrids crossbreds, you can see native cattle, you can keep any kind of cattle in organic farming, all are allowed. But thing is that the standard says that you keep a livestock which is well adapted to the local condition. What does it mean? Well adapted to the local condition, what does it mean? That the, our native cattle are well adapted to the local condition in comparison to the hybrids or the uh, exotics. If you keep crop holistic fusion in rice sun climate, in a hot climate, it may not perform as well. So, but the local cattle who are local, well adapted to local environment, they can be kept. So your doubt is very much should be clear. Any cattle, exotic, pure breed, hybrid, anything can be kept, but you have to see it should be well adapted. That is one about the breeding. There was the feeding. We have to give feed, 100% organic feed. We have to give, but only thing we have to see the initial there is up to 20% you can keep non-organic also in case of. But you should have your farm plants should be such that in due course of time, farm plants say will become self-reliant as far as organic is concerned in coming five years or seven years. So slowly, slowly you have to reduce that non-organic component from the feeding. We cannot give antibiotic less the content concentrate. Good is that you make your own feed at your home, and good condition will be that if you can have feed from your own farm, feed and fodder from own farm. Self-reliant farms are good farms. Your dependence on the market should be reduced to the extent possible. You should be having your own inputs from your own farm generated. And it should not be, and you should not be mixed with other uh, synthetic inputs. Just to sometime in a conventional farms, they are mixing so many allopathic things or chemical things just to rapid growth of the poultry birds or just to enhance the milk that kind of milk enhancers and all growth promoters are not allowed under the organic systems. So that is about this. This is about the feed, breed, I talk, and animal care, uh, the healthcare major aspect is that some you may be having doubt. Many people questions whether we can do vaccination. Sometimes people rampantly, they say without much thinking, vaccination are not allowed. That is not true. Vaccinations are allowed. Be very clear. Vaccination are allowed under organic systems. But when? When the disease is a is a endemic and it is very difficult, and vaccination is the only remedy and the legal requirement. Example is food and mouth disease. Currently, food and mouth disease is there in our country. Our FMD control program is going on. Then you have to vaccinate your animal against FMD disease. And similarly, if there is any other disease which is endemic to a particular area, which keep on happening every year, you can vaccinate your animal against the diseases. Only thing is that the veterinarian will on the recommendation of the veterinarian, you will do it 
and then you will maintain all the record that such and such vaccination is given on such and such date by the recommendation and the recommendation of so and so veterinarian. You have to make recommend report of that one. Same with the antibiotics. If there is no other remedy available, you can give antibiotic to the animal and then you have to follow the withdrawal period. If antibiotic says that you have to follow five days withdrawal period, don't take milk from the animal to, to be sold as organic milk. You can sell it as a conventional milk for five days, then resume milking for organic marketing after five days of the withdrawal period. So that is about the antibiotic. And also you cannot give antibiotic for more than twice in a year. If you need antibiotic treatment for the third time, you have to withdraw that animal permanently from the organic systems. But American NOP, National Organic Program in USA, does not allow at all organic antibiotics. This is in the European standard, it is allowed. And also we follow the European standard on this matter. We allow antibiotics in our uh, dairy farming or animal stock keeping. So about this is about the antibiotic and vaccination I have told. So breed I told, feed I told, and uh, animal health care, the vaccination I told. So housing should be, as far as possible, it should be loose housing. And the organic system, generally they don't need house. But house, you can keep, keep, keep and then op open without tying with a rope. Rassi se banna allowed nahi hai. Tethering is not allowed in general. Unless there are some reason which you can explain why you are tying. Because sometime in our indigenous cattle now, they injure other animals. So you can, but the type, the rope has to be long enough. You have to justify that one. Otherwise, tethering is not allowed. Banna allowed nahi hai. Loose housing system is a good. But in case of some calm is a rain, heavy rain is there. And sometime you have to protect your animal. You have to have a set. It should be very comfortable. And the space should be one and a half times more in case of organic protection. So generally one square meter, if it is required in conventional, you keep one and a half times more than the conventional requirement so that there is enough in water. So you provide provision for the grazing also. Earlier, there was a difficult standard in organic. We have got it removed by forming a committee. It used to say that you can keep only two cows in one hectare land. Now that table has been removed from the organic standard book. That is not there. It was there in the earlier document. So we had a committee. I was also a member of that committee. And then we got removed that requirement, two cows in one hectare land. Because if you are keeping only just two cows in one hectare land, 90% of Indian farmers are having less than one hectare land. Who will be the organic livestock farmer then? So that is so that kind of, so continuously we are revising the, this. so come, housing has to be comfortable. Most probably that loose housing system, which is being generally promoted in Western Maharashtra and all that areas. I showed some pictures that was from the Western Maharashtra. And the Abdul Samad in Bombay Veterinary College earlier used to be, he's doing great work in housing of the livestock. Sometimes those who are, you are from that area, you can follow from him. So this is what is all about. Now it's a time for your questions. Sir, uh... Thank you very much for 